to detach yourself from what's going on in the world because you are in the world, but you're not of the world. God says, I got you. Good morning, children of God. Good morning. I greet you in the name of our risen Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. This is the day that the Lord has made. We shall rejoice and be glad in it. How many are glad to see another month? Can we give God a hand clap of praise? Hallelujah. Uh, I don't want us to forget just how blessed we are. And, and I don't want us to forget how much favor God has shown us. And since January, since January of this year, God proclaimed over us that this was our year of favor. And it seems like all, uh, by, by, by March, the bottom fell out. <laughs> and, 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 and I know that we had a lot of people asking questions. Now, wait a minute, because the word over our life for this year was, this was the year of favor. And then everything that could have happened seems like happened. But I want to remind you this morning that you are still favored by God. I wish I had about 23 folk that believed me today. Let me prove it to you. Let me prove it to you. There are things that could have happened that should have happened. And if you are honest with yourself, things that you deserve to have happened, but God. Some things that you heard about happening to other people, it didn't happen to you because God's favor was still over your life. And I, I don't want you to limit God's favor to a check, to a car, to, to a house, or, or to clothes. No, God's favor over your life is bigger than that. So let's take about five seconds and give God a real worship on today. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. While you're standing, while you're standing, I ask that you would grab your Bibles. You that are at home, if you would grab your Bibles, your iPhones, your iPads, and let's go to the Word of God, to the book of Exodus chapter 19. Exodus 19, beginning at verse 1. Hallelujah. Don't you let anything cause you to forget how good God has been. Every day you wake up, I'm going to get to the word in a minute, but I got to talk to you for a moment. Every day that you wake up, you ought to be thankful. I was listening on a podcast the other day and this brother was speaking. I'm going to get to the word in a moment, but this is important. He worked for a local police department and he was speaking because he'd always go and he worked on the paddy wagon that would go to pick up bodies when he's called. And when he would go to pick up some of the bodies, he noticed something. He noticed that a lot of the people that he would go to pick up, this one particular lady, they went to pick her body up and she was getting ready to drink a cup of coffee and eat popcorn and watch a movie. Another gentleman that they went to pick up, they searched his pockets, he had just gotten his paycheck. Another young man that they picked up, he had just gotten a haircut. They had no idea that that was their last day. And so every day that you allow an opportunity to give God praise, every day that you allow an opportunity to open your eyes, it could be my last time, I don't know, but you shouldn't let a day go by without saying, Father, thank you that you've given me another day. And so we ought to be thankful every day because tomorrow is not promised. And so today, while the blood is running warm in your veins, you ought to tell the Lord, thank you. Exodus 19, Exodus 19, beginning at verse 1. Exodus 19, beginning at verse 1, it says, In the third month after the children of Israel had gone out of the land of Egypt, on the same day, they came to the wilderness of Sinai. For they had departed from Raphidim, had come to the wilderness of Sinai, and camped in the wilderness. 
So Israel camped there before the mountain. And Moses went up to God. And the Lord called to him from the mountain, saying, Thus you shall say to the house of Jacob, and tell the children of Israel, You have seen what I did to the Egyptians, and how I bore you on eagles' wings, and brought you to myself. Now, therefore, if you will indeed obey my voice and keep my covenant, then you shall be a special treasure to me above all people, for all the earth is mine, and you shall be to me a kingdom of priests and a holy nation. These are the words which you shall speak to the children of Israel. Can somebody say amen? This morning I want to talk to you from the subject, a meeting in the mountains. A meeting in the mountains. Hear me. Whenever God wants you to go deeper, he will call you higher. Whenever God wants to take you to another level, he will speak to you on another level. Sometimes, whenever God is about to make a major transition in your life, hear me, he will demand a meeting in the mountain. Let us pray. Father God, we come before you today and we thank you for grace and mercy. We thank you for keeping us and protecting us. We thank you for reminding us just how good you've been. We thank you for reminding us of your constant favor over our lives. Bless us today. Let this word that we hear be a word, Lord God, that settles in our spirit, transforms us, changes us from the inside out. We'll give you the praise, the glory, and the honor. In Jesus' name, amen. Somebody shout, a meeting in the mountains. Hallelujah. A meeting in the mountains. L let me remind you, children of God, that uh, first of all, God loves his creation. He loves everything that he created with his hand, with his spoken word. Uh, especially, he especially loves his, his greatest creation, which is mankind. And the reason I know that to be true is because the first thing God gave man was his image and likeness. His, his image and likeness. His, his uh, imago Dei. Imago Dei, the, the image of God. Because he gave that to man because that's what he wanted man to have. He gave no other created thing his image but man. Are you hearing me? And the second thing that God did was he placed man, hear me, in his presence. Which is the meaning of the word in the Hebrew language, Eden. And so then we can deduce that God's greatest desire, I need you to hear me, was that man would act like him and live with him. Are you hearing what I'm saying? And so when God calls a meeting, He's not calling a meeting just to hear himself talk. When God calls a meeting with his creation, watch this, saints of God. He's calling it, hear me, for the purpose of relationship and fellowship. I want you to say that with me. Relationship and fellowship. Whenever you've been summoned to a meeting with God, bring your pen and your pad. I tell you oftentimes that whenever you go to bed at night, always go to bed, always go to sleep with a pen and pad beside your bed. If you're not expecting to hear anything from God, you, you don't have to do this. But those of us that are expecting to hear God give us direction, purpose, and goal, always be prepared. Always have an ear to hear what the Spirit of the Lord is saying in this hour. And so watch this. When we read the Bible, we will see that God, he uses mountains. He, he used, Elder Mark, he used mountains a lot in antiquity. And mountains served a great purpose because it is there in the mountains that, that God made covenants. 
He, he, made, he made covenants in the mountains. The Bible is replete with examples of God using mountain experiences to give his people promises for the future. It was there in a mountain experience after building an ark with no blueprint. It was there in a the mountain experience after, after Noah prepared for rain that he'd never seen before. It was there in a the mountain experience that after 40 days and 40 nights of rain, that now the ark that, 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 that Noah created landed there on the mountain. And it was there on the mountain that God made a covenant with Noah and with mankind. The covenant was that I will never destroy mankind in this manner again. Sealed it with a rainbow made this covenant on the mountain. It, it was there on a the mountain that Abraham found himself with his only son Isaac, prepared now on Mount Moriah to sacrifice his only son. It was there that the angel of the Lord appeared to him, called out to him, Abraham, Abraham, lay not your hand on the lad or do him any harm. For now I know that you fear God. And it was there, it was there on that same mountain that God now makes a covenant with Abraham. Blessings I will bless thee. Multiplying I will multiply thy descendants as the stars in heaven and the sand on the seashore. On the mountain. And it was there on the mountain that Moses saw a burning bush. God help me to preach it right. He saw a burning bush there on the mountain. Let me pause for a moment because sometimes God will set stuff on fire to get your attention. He, he, he saw the burning bush and it was there on the mountain that Moses goes to the burning bush. It is there that God speaks to Moses on the mountain and says, Moses, I've heard the cries of my people because of the whips of the taskmaster. Go and tell Pharaoh to let my people go. It was right there on the mountain that God now makes a covenant with Moses because he says to Moses there in Exodus 3 and 12, he says, a sign to you that I have sent you, watch the text, is when you have brought the people out of Egypt, you shall serve God on this mountain. Ah, are you hearing what I'm saying? When God makes a covenant, it's deeper than a promise and stronger than a contract. Well, 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 Pastor Luke, if that's true, because God spoke some things to me in January and I still haven't received it yet, why is it that I haven't written? Here it is, we're in the fourth quarter. We're, we're, in, we're in the last few weeks of the fourth quarter. Why is it I have not received it yet? Because sometimes, hear me, closings get pushed back. Let me, let me talk to this side. Let me talk. So sometimes, uh, out of uh, no fault of your own, closings get pushed back. I don't know why God hadn't given it to you yet, but what I do know is that when God makes a contract with his people, that God is God enough to bring it to pass. Somebody shout, just wait on him. Just wait on him. Here it is. So when God calls you to a mountain and he gives you a mountain experience, it's because he wants to make a covenant. But there's another reason God calls you to mountains. Sometimes when God calls you to a mountain, here it is, James, it's because God has a message. <laughs> he calls you to the mountain to speak to you because God has a message. In the Bible, mountains are often places where God encounters his people. Watch this. He changes his people. Then he sends them back down with a prophetic word for people. See, sometimes when God gives you a message, I need you to catch this. He will give you a message twofold. He will give you a message sometimes for you to give to somebody else. He will give you a message. He will call you to the mountain, give you a message so that you can take that message to somewhere. That's what God told Moses here in the text. He told Moses, go and tell the children of Israel this message. Tell them to remember the Egyptians. Go and tell them that everything that happened to the Egyptians, remind them that I bore them on eagles' wings. Let, let, let me explain that to you. Whenever an eaglet is beginning to fly, the mother eagle flies beneath them just in case their wings fail them. The, the, the mother eagle can now take them up and then bring them up to a safe altitude. God says, I didn't let you fall. I protected you. Moses, go and tell them 
that if they, here's the text, if they obey my voice and keep my covenant, watch what God says he's going to do, they shall be my special treasure. You miss your shout. This is the creator of the cosmos. This is the maker of heaven and earth. He's saying, if you do what I told you, you will be my special treasure. He says, you will be my kingdom of priests and a holy nation. In other words, God says, if you just do what I told you to do, here it is. He says, if you will, I will. <laughs> if you do what I said, I will do what I said. I wish I had somebody in here. And, and I've come to tell somebody today, I've come now to bring you a message that the same word that God spoke then, he's speaking now. God says, if you do what he told you to do, he'll do what he promised you he would do. I need about 23 people to just catch that in their spirit. It, it's going to happen not because the preacher said it, but because God said if I do what he told me. So here it is, here it is. So one reason that God calls you to the mountain is because he gives you a message to give to other people. That's what preaching is all about. When you preach, you lay before God. He gives you a message, not just for you. He gives you a message to take to his people. That's why sometimes it's a message that makes you shout, and sometimes it's a message that makes you say ouch. Sometimes it's a bitter pill. Sometimes when God gives you a message for the people, you see yourself in the message that you preach it. I wish I had somebody in here. But God says, be obedient and take the people the word that I have given you. But oftentimes, when God calls you to the mountain to give you a message, sometimes it's for people, but other times it's for you. Let me talk to this side over here. Sometimes when God summons you to the mountain and he gives you a prophetic word, it is not for you to preach. It is not for you to teach. It is not for you to say, well, I wish they could get this CD. No, that word is for you. Somebody shout, it's for me. You remember the Mount of Transfiguration, right? You remember the Mount of Transfiguration when Jesus went up. He took Peter, James, and John with him. And the Bible says, Henry, that when they went up, that Peter, James, and John, they saw Jesus transform right before their eyes. He was there in a conversation with Moses and with Elijah. And Peter, Peter, Peter said, it is good for us to be here. Why don't we build three tabernacles, one for Moses, one for Elijah, and one for Jesus? But then a sound from heaven, a voice from heaven spoke and said, this is my beloved son in whom I'm well pleased. Hear him. In other words, what I'm allowing you to see is not for you to try to build me something. What I'm allowing you to see is to build something in you. Are you hearing what I'm saying? He, he says, watch, 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 watch this. I need you to catch that. Here, turn in your Bibles with me to Matthew chapter 17, verse 9. Because when they were coming down from the mountain, I need you to catch this. Somebody shout, it's for me. Say it again. Say, it's for me. Type it on the screen. It's for me. Matthew 17, verse 9. It says, Now as they came down from the mountain, <laughs> Jesus commanded them, saying, Tell the vision to no one until the Son of Man is risen from the dead. Sometimes when he brings you up to a mountain and gives you a message, is for you to keep to yourself. Sometimes, saints of God, you must keep the dream quarantine. Don't spread it around to too many folk right now. You, you, you must keep the dream to yourself. Joseph would not have had a problem. Joseph only had a problem when he began to share. Come here, let me talk to you. God never told him to tell his father and sister, his father and brothers and mother the dream or the vision that he had. It was only when he began to share. God gave him that vision for him because he was trying to equip him to prepare him. And sometimes when God speaks to you, that word is for you. Somebody shout, it's for me. Why is it for me? Because if you keep living, you will discover that oftentimes people will pray on you before they pray for you. So you can't tell everybody everything. Somebody shout, keep it to yourself. Just keep it, just keep it. Here it is, here it is. So, 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 so watch this. God will bring you to a mountain and give you a word to prepare you so that when 
troubles come in the days ahead you can hold on to the word that he gave you let me give you an example God told us in January this was the year of favor the pandemic hit but you got to hold on to what God said in January he said to you this is my year of favor now you can go the way of the world or you can stand on the word of God when he calls you to the mountain and gives you a word don't question the word that God has given you and I need about 23 people to just shout stand on God's word here it is here it is here it is I'm, and I'm, and I'm almost done this mountain experience is critical because the mountain experience, Deacon Wayne, it will teach you how to serve. When you, you've had a mountain experience with God, it will teach you how to show enough serve. Let me give you some text right here. I want you to turn with me to Matthew 28. Turn with me to Matthew 28, verse 16. Uh, from verse 16 through verse 20. I, I want you to read that with me. Um, Matthew 28, verse 16. It says, Then the eleven disciples went away into Galilee to the mountain. Somebody say the mountain. To the mountain which Jesus had appointed for them. Let me pause for a moment. This ain't in my notes, but I need to, I need to say this. It says that then the 11 disciples. We know that God dealt with 12. We know he dealt with the 12 tribes of Israel. That it started out 12 disciples, but then one of them fell off. And, and so now that the text right here said the 11. What's your point, Pastor Luke? I'm glad you asked. Um, the point is, don't be so quick to fill in a void. Let me talk to this side over here. It, it, some voids need to remain for a season. Some of you, you move on too quick. You, you fill in a void. It ain't the season to try. Sometimes you need to let that stay vacant for a while until you've gone to the mountaintop to hear from God. Okay, that ain't even in my text, but let, let, let me get back to my, to my word. But that was, that was for somebody right there. Here it is. Verse 17 says, And when they saw him, they worshipped him, but some doubted. I got to pause again. How is it you can walk with him for three years, see him raise the dead, see him feed the hungry? How is it you can see him uh, give sight to the blind? How is it you saw him crucified on Calvary and now you see him now reincarnated you you see him standing there in front of you and you still doubt I come to tell you that some people would never would never be satisfied <laughs> there are some people you would never be able to please come here let me talk to you I think this is a good time even in this Christmas season I I'm talking to somebody right now you trying to decide what can I do to make them happy let me help you nothing I can't get no help in here because it's some folk that, that, that they refuse to believe after you've done all you could give them your life blood but still some folk won't believe here it is verse 18 says and Jesus came to them here's my point and Jesus came and he spoke to them saying all authority has been given to me in heaven and on earth go therefore and make disciples of all the nations baptizing them in the name of the Father of the Son and of the Holy Spirit teaching them hear the text to observe all things that I've commanded you. And lo, I'm with you always, even to the end of the age. He, here it is. Here it is. He calls them up on the mountain. Watch this. He gives them instructions of what it is they are to do. He moves them from saving faith to serving faith. from saying I'm saved and I'm secure to now it's time for you to serve somebody else and I believe that the reason most people hear me most people never see their dreams come to pass is because they refuse to serve let me talk to this side over here some people never receive the blessing that they're waiting on is because they just won't serve 
serving, hear me saints of God, serving gets you in the room unnoticed. <laughs> I wish I had about 23 servers in the house. Serving will get you in the room. It will get you in the room unnoticed because, see, see, servers, they get access to things that other people don't get access to. Are you hearing what I'm saying? See, the servers, they get to see what's going on in the restaurant and what's happening in the kitchen. See, if I had about 23 servers in the house that knew I was talking about right through that. If you learn how to serve, God lets you see some stuff that other folk would never see. If you just learn how to serve, they, they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They that serve the Lord, there's something that you get exposed to just because you have a spirit to serve. I stand before you today and I can remember when I served, I served and I served from my heart. Sometimes when you serve, you might even get rejected, but you're not, you're not serving because of your feelings. You're serving because of your assignment. Did you hear what I said? When people reject you, you got to learn to accept yourself. Because sometimes God will allow people to reject you because he don't want their fingerprints on his blueprint. I wish I had somebody in here. He sent you there to serve them, not for them to change you. Come here. I'm talking to some Because don't you know the church is one of the only places where people stop coming when they get hurt. People stop serving when they get hurt. Just look at your Bible. You get hurt at your job every day, but you show up every morning. Come here, let me talk to you. Your feelings don't have to be intact in order for you to serve. You're serving because that's what God sent you there to do. I need about 23 folks to understand where I'm talking about right here. Because when he calls you to the mountain, he calls you there to serve. And what I have discovered is that, watch this, saints of God, you don't have to agree to serve. You don't even have to understand to serve. But when you show up been to the mountain and you come there prepared to serve, you will come in serving like you thought of it yourself. I wish I had somebody in here. I'm talking to those that are waiting on God to take you to another level. God says, I'm going to take you to the next level when you learn how to serve. Jesus said, I did not come to be served, but I come to serve and to offer my life up for many. Somebody shall serve. And so he will bring you up to a mountain to humble you, to teach you how to serve. Because if you never learn how to serve, everything that you do will be about you. And so he has to call you to a mountain. And watch this, saints. God is serious about how you serve. That's what got Moses in trouble. Come here. God told Moses to speak to the rock. Moses got tired of the people badgering him. He smote the rock. And because of his actions, because he did not hollow God before the people, he was not able to enter the promised land. And sometimes when you serve, it gets on your nerves. But you can't be led by your feelings. Because if, if we were emotional servers, I can't get no help in here. Don't you know how often your waitress don't want to bring you your food because of your attitude? Just look at your Bible. Don't you know how often they want to just leave your food in the back and let you go get it yourself? Why? They keep serving. Why? Because they have a job to do. Well, come here. Let me talk to you. God called you to serve his people in whatever capacity that is. No matter what they say, no matter what they think, you keep serving because God placed you on assignment to serve. And so Jesus, I'm done in the greatest service of all. When he went up the mountain, mountain called Calvary. In serving you and serving me, he laid down his life on the mountain so that you and I would have an opportunity to eternal life. And I just come to talk to somebody today because when I talk to you about this mountain, I'm not talking about a physical mountain outside. No, I'm not talking about that. The mountain that I'm talking to you about is the mountain of your heart. 
the, emo the, the, the emotional capacity of your heart. There's a space in your heart that God wants to meet you. He wants to meet you in the mountain of your heart to make a covenant with you. He wants to meet you in the mountain of your heart to give you a message for somebody else. He wants to meet you in the mountain of your heart to give you a message for yourself. He wants to meet you in the mountain of your heart to teach you how to serve. God wants to meet you in the mountain of your heart. Ah, and all I have to say to you this morning is don't miss your meeting. My, my, my plea to you as I close is don't miss your meeting. Because God has a word for you. A word that's going to give you direction, purpose, and goal. And he's going to speak to you and it's going to become so clear. It will become so clear that no matter what happens around you, you will continue to serve because you know what he promised you. No matter what happens around you, there's nothing that you wouldn't sacrifice for him because you know what he promised you. And so my prayer for you is that you're on time for your meeting in the mountain. Come on, give God a hand clap of praise right there. For those of you that are watching online, those of you that are listening to me, I, I want you to hear my heart right here. There's a lot of things that I was confused about, even in ministry, because the weight of ministry can get so heavy. And sometimes God will ask you to do some things that don't line up with the way you think it should be done. Sometimes God will ask you to do things in a way that in your mind you could say, well, God, couldn't the same thing be accomplished if we just did it this way? And that's why the Bible says, lean not to thy own understanding, but in all thy ways acknowledge him and he will direct your path. Because when you have a meeting with him on the mountain, you have to be humble and submitted enough to do things his way. When he says fast and pray, you fast and pray. When he says, forgive, then you forgive. When God gives you instructions to do a thing, then you do it trusting that he's going to work things out in your faith. And I, I testify to you that when I stop doing things my way, I would like to stand here before you as a man of God on the day and tell you that I've only had to have one meeting in the mountain with God, but I've had several. Because when my mother died, I couldn't understand. I had to go to the mountain. When I was rejected by those that said that they loved me, I didn't understand. I had to go to the mountain. When I was constantly giving but never receiving, I couldn't understand it. So I had to go to the mountain. When my children weren't doing the things that I wanted them to do and that I raised them to do, I couldn't understand it. And I had to go to the mountain. And every time I went, God says, my grace is sufficient. grace is sufficient for you and there are certain things about this journey that you will never understand until you accept your meeting in the mountain I want to pray with you this morning I want every head bowed every eye closed father God we come before you today and we come before you in the mountain of our heart just you and us and father we first of all repent for anything that we've said anything that we've done, any rebellious acts, anything that we neglected to do when we heard clearly from you to do it. Father, we ask that you would wash us from the crown of our head to the soles of our feet. We know that you left us here for a purpose. And we repent, Father God, that we have neglected that purpose. But thank you for giving us another chance. So, Father, we stand before you now on time for our meeting in our heart because we want you to change us from the inside out. No longer shall we compete with the world. No, no longer shall we measure ourselves about what's going on in the world. We will listen to that still small voice that's down on the inside of us. 
And when you say go, we will go. And when you say speak, we will speak. When you say give, we will give. When you say serve, we will serve. And so, Father God, we ask now that you would bore us up on eagle's wings. Take us to the place that you've destined for us to be. My prayer for over every listening ear in this place, that they will remember how far you've already brought them. They will continue to stand on your to do what you said you would do. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Come on, let's give God a hand clap of praise all over the building. May the Lord bless you. May the Lord keep you is my prayer. Be on time for your meeting in the mountains. God bless you. We love you.